<laughs> Welcome. Thank you very much. Well, I was right as I knew I was about the dark hair. Then. Yeah, I'm sorry I can't be the cute blonde one. I'm sorry, sorry about that. I think I'm you're sorry. cuter. Am I? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. We should talk afterwards. G4 um, won the first ever of the X Factor. Well, we came second, actually. Yeah, oh, but second, it was no, the we first just... series, yeah, so just over two years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it seems second. like a long time ago. Who came ago. first? A guy called Steve Brookstein. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And the, but that was the, the first series, though, wasn't it? It was. It seems like a whole world away for us. I mean, you know, two years on and we're still going, we're still kicking on. Obviously, there have been two more series since and we're just enjoying life, still, still enjoying it. I mean, we were uh, four mates from college. We met at university in London and um, just as a bit of fun, we thought, why not? We'll go for X Factor. The cute blonde one, John, um, saw the advert on TV for this new concept. <laughs> You know, inviting groups along rather than just these solo artists, and and mentioned it to us, and we we just formed as sort of a barbershop group really at, at college, and we thought we'd give it a go, see what happens. Um, all gave in our twelve and a half p of the fifty p call, that it was, and um, <laughs> turned up on the day thinking perhaps we we make the joke DVD because obviously we were classically trained and perhaps not cool or what people were expecting, and the next thing we know we getting through the judges round onto the live finals getting through to final at the end and and it's just it's just been a roller coaster ever since and we you know just essentially four mates at college went on it complete completely for fun and then it turned into this and you had what, what had you done just a bit of barbershop stuff yeah i mean we we're all studying a soloist going into opera but we we're all very young to be singing opera so we were all taking our time and and it was a sideline because it got very serious and very competitive at college so for the four of us to go and sing together it was just really fun and get all the harmonies going and then um, X Factor came along and it, it changed things a bit, yeah. We, wh how do you describe... We were talking about popular, but with, with operatic input and so on yeah. earlier on. How do you describe what you do? It's hard to say. I think it's... I don't think anyone can quite put their finger on it. It's pop, it's classical, and it's everything in between. And I think it's somehow unique what we've done. Um, and first with Bohemian Rhapsody when we did that and we covered that and we sang it slightly operatic. I mean, Queen music does lend itself very much to the operatic side of things, but I don't think you can pigeonhole it. And we always like to say it's G4. We like to put our own stamp on it and say that it's, it's our sort of music. Yeah, your sort of music. Yeah. As opposed to G7, which is something quite different. <laughs> but the, so what's the, what's the plan? Well, first of all, what plan did you hatch after the moment that you came second and so on? And, and, and did you get lots of offers and lots of agents coming up to you? Or? It became a bit ridiculous, yeah. Did it? Yeah, I mean, you just, you just feel like a normal person. And um, overnight, you become this famous person that people recognise on the streets. At that point, when you're X Factor, you are the talk of the town. Everyone knows who you are. And everyone wants a piece of you. And it's, it's very hard to kind of adapt to that and sort of come to terms with it. Um, but we were approached by several record labels, and we decided to go with Sony BMG and um, uh, planned on doing a, a first album, which for us was just a dream come true. I mean, to get yeah. on the live shows was something. Then we found ourselves recording the first album and promoting it, and um, little did we know then that we would have... Um, well, now we've released three albums, sold a million and a half albums in the UK, and we've done quite a few tours, and we're still carrying on, and we're doing two tours this year. And we're still getting on, you know, even after all this time, and I think, you know, it's very hard, obviously, being together. You spend 24-7 together. And um, obviously, I don't live with the other guys, but um, you just need to get away from each other sometimes. But we get on really well, and we're just, as I said, oh. we're just having a, the ball, you know. Listen, that, enjoying it. that's infectious. That comes over. <laughs> you know, it's great story, isn't it? Mm. Great story. Well, good luck. Long may it, long may it last. Much. May you be too busy for at least 20 years to do pantomime. <laughs> but when you're going to do pantomime, there is your teacher. Yeah, we'll be in touch. I'm the dame of dames. <laughs> She's going to want the cute blonde one, isn't she? <laughs> I'm going to run off with the cute blonde one. <laughs> and then there'll only chance. be three of G3. It doesn't work. <laughs> G3, that'd be a disappointment. Here it is, just Thank to you say so much. thanks a million, Mike. You haven't got it's three right. others, have you? I'm going to Pardon? the other guys. You haven't got three more. No, they've got to come. Oh, OK. They have, to, they have to show up. Show up here in Leeds. <laughs> oh, we might make an exception. They're great to have you with us, really. Thank you really. so much. It's been a our, pleasure. Our huge thanks to, to Mike Christie.